Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. Today we have a couple rounds of the magazine. We're going to get into what's happening in Afghanistan. Um, yesterday was the unfortunate third anniversary of the tragedy that happened at Abbey Gate. So we're going to revisit that. There's also some other things that are going around in the world, including another dummy Marine. No. Got a dummy uh -oh. Marine. Is it me? No. Uh -oh. do, you guys, do you guys remember a couple months ago when that? Probably not. Sergeant, <laughs> that you, I think you actually Gunny will champagne? on this one. Gunny Champagne. Oh, how could I forget? So it's not like a redo of Gunny Champagne. We're not going to retell that story. Where he wrote a book incriminating all the dumb shit he had done. Yes, exactly okay. right. So if you don't remember, he was the recruiter who targeted and groomed a, a recruit that was, and I think she was teen still, mm -hmm. like 19-ish. Oh, and yes. Not even, I don't think. Yeah, maybe so. not even. And then he self-published a book on Amazon um yep. highlighting his essentially his crimes yeah like his i mean if is it a violation so, of ucmj like no I, that's a crime you know what's a not crime. in jj did tie buckle the h for hubris that guy yeah or the double h for hazardously horny mm -hmm. you don't have that one in so the old no jj H's did in tie, the buckle. tie buckle yeah Kate, how many do you know of the jj did tie buckle i feel like every year we do this and i get like three of them <laughs> Justice, I don't, yeah. Judgment, uh huh. Diligence, yep. Intelligence. I honestly don't remember either at this point. Telepathic. Telepathy, yeah, that's one. Bravery. Bravery. Under. Under God. Under God. Another thing I want to talk about before we get going. I'm sick of poop shaming, dude. Like we've been in the office, and granted, yesterday Donnie does. I think it was Donnie does. I'm pretty sure it was Donnie does because we pulled the footage and he was in there a long time. <laughs> he left a big old Pringle can size turd. It was huge, um, which I'm not judging. I won't even mention it publicly. The office was like, there's nothing. about it. I did hear about the turd. Nobody knew who it belonged to. Yeah. And I was looking at it. I was like, this thing is outrageous. And then when they pulled the footage, he was like, oh, man, he was in there a long time. So what? Like we we've got to move past as a society when we judge people at the office for pooping for a long time. Who cares? I know on the bus. Well, also, from... not for nothing. These days, between having your phone in there, it's like having 20 magazines in oh, front yeah. of you. Oh, number yeah. one. I used to and... read the shampoo bottle. Yeah. yeah. And number two, <laughs> especially, in, yeah, especially <laughs> in that office, most offices, or actually like any job, sometimes you just want quiet where you know no one's going to come and interrupt you. For 20 minutes, you just need that time to yourself. So no judgment. I'm sorry, Kate. Yeah, when did months? that when did that shame start? Like no other animals have shame. An elephant, huge poops, just drop it in the middle of the field. Like I'm not being a proponent of dropping it in the field, but this whole thing of when you first start dating somebody, you gotta wait a while to poop. Well, that's, that's different. Now we're yeah, apples and oranges yeah. here. That's I know, but it's the dollars. same principle, right? Like, no, but it's different. It you want to get comfortable. Like, with maybe somewhere. not in an Applebee's, but somewhere. There does seem like there's something a little unprofessional about <laughs> squeezing a smelly brown log out of your butthole within 20 feet of people you work with every day. It is a little bit of a there's a classiness to discretion in that. That being said, on the bus back from camp. Uh, pardon my takes intern was sitting by the bathroom in the back of the bus with a stopwatch. And whenever somebody went in, he would start timing them to see how long we I did. Hope... NBA hole. Yeah. Huey on the camp trip. Yes. Oh, I didn't you know, know. Cause you didn't poop. Well, let me <laughs> tell you. I was Shout out to me. in there. I was you never... pooped. No, God, no. Oh, but I thought about it. Okay. I mean, you gotta be in dire it. straits. I don't even care how long the trip is. You gotta be in dire straits to have to use. A restroom. KB took a shit that. on the bus. Nah, he's weird though, so that that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, also, doesn't I thought care. about he it wrestled. the other day. <laughs> I think poop stinking is a learned behavior because I think that you're told from an early age that poop is so gross that it stinks. I think that it's a learned behavior. You're clearly out of the diaper stage of parenthood right now, because <laughs> let me tell you, you let that trash can yeah, sit there stink. for a day too long. Good God. Yeah. I have been out Good of the game for a Lord. while. I do. Now that you say it, but I, 
do you think it's because it's extra poopy and you've been you've been taught? No, dude. I don't know what you're getting no, at right stinks, now. Poop poop stinks. Stinks. Sorry, I'm, dude. I'm trying to outthink the room yeah. on this one. It just smells. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe the it's controversy not. that finally tore ZBT apart with all our differing <laughs> opinions. You know what? I think this is the first time that we've ever had a discussion in a like a argument type thing where I'm gonna admit I changed my view just oh, now. Thank you. It took three minutes. See, people think I can't change that I'm not that I don't listen. I listen. Here we go. I listen. It's never okay. too late. Yeah. Poop stinks. All right. This is a weird transition. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about Afghanistan. Before we get going, though, I want to have a, how many days do you think we conducted operations in Afghanistan? How many like start days? to finish? 1, Starting start to finish. Days, the war on terror. It it's longer ends. than rent for sure. Because that was minutes in a year. More minutes than that. So multiply more, that more times days 22. than minutes. I don't know how many days. Seven thousand six hundred and twenty-eight days. Seven thousand six hundred. That's a long time. So how we many? seven thousand. Let me see. I put the number at the top. Seven thousand two hundred and sixty-eight days. It's a long time. Long wow. time. And how many days yeah. of accountability? That's nineteen for years, eleven months, three days. That's okay. Zero. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time. Um, so at the end of about 7,400 of those days, or no, 6,400 of those days, maybe shorter. I don't know what I'm trying to say. We came up with a plan for withdrawal. So we're going to go up uh, through that a little bit just to refresh people's brains about what happened. Yep. So February 2020, in an effort to end the nearly two-decade-long war in Afghanistan, the U.S. under the Trump administration signed a peace agreement with the Taliban and Qatar. This agreement outlined conditions. The Doha Agreement is yeah. what those are. That was called. This is in Doha, Qatar. Um, this agreement outlined the conditions for the withdrawal of U.S. and NATO troops from Afghanistan and included several commitments from both sides. So, on the U.S. side, they agreed to gradually withdraw all its forces from Afghanistan with the complete withdrawal to be completed by May of 2021. As we all know, this later got extended to August 2021 under the Biden, Biden administration. On the Taliban's end, they committed to preventing terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda from using Afghan soil to threaten the security of the U.S. and its allies. And that was a big thing from the was it the people who carried out 9-11. They were able to like settle into Afghanistan mm -hmm. up in the boonies they had their and camps train there. and do their mm -hmm. camps and all that stuff. So we're like, no more of that. The Taliban also agreed to enter into intra-Afghan negotiations with the Afghan government and other Afghan factions to reach a political settlement. And I feel like, obviously, like anyone from the outside is like, that's not going to happen. Even, but even when we when this news first came out, we were all like, what the fuck are we talking about here? Like, we're going to rely on the Taliban to have good faith negotiations with a, a government that they hate and, and have been at war with. To me, that was we gave them that provision from our end as a way for everybody responsible for the last 20 years there to save a little bit of face because what was the whole purpose was coin counter insurgency. And the, the basis of that was building up the government. And so we did all this dumb shit to make a democracy in a place where it was never going to happen. And that was like the whole point of all the efforts is, you know, what we were supposed to be saying and thinking, whatever. Um, and so now we were leaving and the Taliban was going to take over. And if they didn't at least agree to work with the government we had spent 20 years for, what the fuck was the point? I'm rambling, but clearly you could see it bothers me. Well, it, I think it should, because <laughs> some of those <laughs> some of those agreements, you're like, ah, you know that they had those conversations. And I bet behind closed doors with some of them, they're like, Look, you guys just have to agree to this on paper. We're not dumb. We know that you guys are going to be doing some <laughs> fucked up shit in a couple like days. I said, it was t shit like that, I think, was just to save face on the American side, even though everybody, even down to the dumbest Lance Corporal like me, was like, that ain't going to happen. Oh, I think you mean Sergeant. Hey, yes. So I would say that's stolen <laughs> valor, but I did get a letter about a week after Sergeant Kate. A Sergeant letter. Kate. Not a promotion warrant, but a letter. <laughs> Dearest Katie. I write from, you from the battlefield. It was from my dad, so I felt better about my <laughs> service. Yeah, we should just write promotion letters. to, Like, let's say you've been out for five years. We'll and send you a promotion. Show us that you follow us on iTunes, and we'll promote you. Yeah, fair All deal. Right. Okay, yeah. fair back deal. to the But I'd rather YouTube. 
another part of this agreement besides being like promise you guys are going to work with the afghan government we spent 20 years to build the prisoner release clause this was one of the most controversial parts of the agreement and it was the stipulation that the afghan government which not a direct party to the u.s taliban deal would release up to 5,000 taliban prisoners in exchange for 1,000 afghan government troops and civilians i'll be honest the taliban i didn't realize that we had 5,000 until this i didn't realize that there are 5,000 that we had captured 5,000 is pretty significant. That's we a lot. prisons everywhere. I know, there but was, yeah. when you put the number on it, 5,000, that's a lot of prisoners and, I that mean, were released. That's not all of them, clearly. It's that, and also yeah. on the other end, but I'm sure they all got out anyway, they probably, the Taliban probably had way more than 1,000 Afghan government troops oh, and with, civilians. Without a doubt. Oh, and one thing I didn't put on this sheet that I wanted to touch on, DVIDs, man, they are. That shit. We need an investigation into DVIDs. And I, for those who don't know, that's the open source. If you need a photo of a helicopter to use without getting sued, like the government PAO people, they go out and they take photos and do news stories of everything, every little detail. We had them with us. There's thousands the that get published every day because people that have jobs like JD Vance, yeah. that's what they do. They go around, take pictures, they document everything. Obviously, it's a little different in wartime. But go check it out. Yeah. D -V -I -D -S. D -V -S. Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, you don't Google it. Yeah. It's like Google it's images Google. for free. But anyway, what's the deal with it? So, one, there was a couple of, and one of them was really recently, the 13 that were killed at Abbeygate, they took down the photos of them coming home from Dover. Yeah. Oh, really? I did see that. Like, what the fuck? I didn't is see that the about? reason. They were like, it's for the families. That's not the way David's work. Like David, every picture that's taken on a government camera belongs to the people. That's why you can Freedom of Information Act it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. no, like all they did that, they took down thousands of pictures from Afghanistan, including one, those that happened at Abigate, thousands of pictures. And they said wow. it was because they didn't want reprisals from the Taliban against people's faces that were in there, but they didn't, they didn't like blank the faces out, blur the faces out. They took those pictures down completely. Hmm. I don't like that at all. Like when you talk about open government, that seems like we are trying to hide something. Up. Like that they took down all those pictures, even though they had been used in places like the Washington Post, the New York Times, Task and Purpose, on and on and on. They they all use these photos and they were out there. Next thing you know, they're they're taken down. And the there was really no explanation from like the Department of Defense. The the spokesman essentially said, Yeah, these were supposed to be private. Uh, pictures for the families, the one at Abgate. Like, no, it's not, dude. Like, every single time somebody has a dignified return to Dover, that's public and it should be. The public should see mm -hmm. what happened there. It's another fucking cover up from the Biden administration that's absolute horseshit. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I didn't know that that, that was a. Uh... That yeah, that, I, that rationale, like, oh, you're trying to protect the families. Believe me, I think the fact that those 13 and any service member who gave their life. For the country in the last 20 years in, in the global war on terror is meant to be respected and honored but you have to go search those pictures out it's not like they're they're you know pr printing them out and, and putting them on their front lawn i don't understand that rationale at all and and to your point chaps those are public images for the most part I mean, for lack of a better explanation, right? They all are. Uh, unless they yeah. are taken on somebody's personal cell phone, all right. of those are. And last point I'll say about this thing. These, what family wants their service member who died for their country to be less remembered? Through yeah, pictures? you want them honored. Yeah. Right. Like, I can't imagine if one of my kids eventually served and was kia i would want them remembered forever like as many pictures of their sacrifice because that's what they did like yeah, I, I mean i don't understand it, it at all it's similar you know a lot of us wear the kia bracelets and the whole point is so people ask like oh what's that and you get the chance to talk about that person it's the same thing with a picture if they you put up someone's picture that's an opportunity to speak about their their story and and honor them and, and honor their memory uh that's the way i i view it Yep. Well, I'll look into it and I'll see what maybe next episode I'll come back with some more digging on that. 
Um, despite initial resistance, the Afghan government eventually agreed to the prisoner release under pressure from the U.S. and to facilitate the start of the intra-Afghan peace talks. So the Afghan government was like, fuck, we don't want to do this. These people are going to, 5,000 Taliban are going to come out. They're going to be pissed at us. The prisoner release process began in March 2020, took several months to complete, with the final batch of prisoners being released by September of 2020. Controversy and concerns, the release of the Taliban prisoners was met with significant criticism, both within Afghanistan and internationally. Many feared that releasing these hardened fighters would strengthen the Taliban's military capabilities and undermine security in Afghanistan. Uh, Again, it was like, think. what was the point of capturing them in the first place? Like, that was just another insult to injury thing among thousands. Reports and intelligence indicated that a number of the released prisoners quickly rejoined the Taliban's ranks. No shit. Uh, this was seen as a direct threat to the fragile security situation in the country. Yeah. Uh, while prisoner release was intended to build confidence and pays, pave the way for peace talks, the increase in violence and Taliban's reluctance to engage in meaningful negotiations fueled skepticism about the effectiveness of the agreement. No mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. Um, the whole thing was basically a dog and pony show, really. There was, it was just, the whole thing was a joke. Uh, yeah. 5,000 is so much, but mm -hmm. also... From a logistical standpoint, if you are going to turn over, who's man in those jails? Mm. You know, oh, man, like yeah. you're not going to have I mean, that's a lot of prisoners. And without the support and finances and payment from U.S., the U.S., how are you going to keep them? I mean, yeah. you don't have too many options, really. You can't just leave them there either. That would be inhumane. And so. you can't take them to like Guantanamo Bay. That's 5000 people. And you don't right. even like there's no trials. There's no nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't um, know. I, I I just don't understand the rationale on a lot of these decisions. Maybe years from now, we'll get a book or something that gives us a shed some light onto what people were thinking as it uh, pertains to this, because I don't get it. They've the Afghanistan papers. They've done a full report. It, it's just it's it now. Nah, but I, I, I think that's still too soon in terms of people being extremely forthright. I think they probably said what they had to but there's probably still a lot out there that we don't know yeah that, i think I the, mean, maybe right. that's... the 10 years later i think we'll have like really yeah. saw like not just what actually happened but the trickle down effect from that too yeah i think will be heartbreaking and very interesting yeah so long-term consequences following us and nato withdrawal in 2021 the taliban rapidly advanced across afghanistan leading to the fall of Kabul in August 2021 and the collapse of the Afghan government. This sounds so dumb. Like, I think I kind of, because if you remember the episode from when that happened, like, I was having, like, a mental crisis. And like, I, yeah. I could even tell the difference in your voice from when we started to now. Like, I know. And, like, I'm going through it. Like, it's, and I think you have... <laughs> every oh, right no. to be that's why i go to therapy no i feel I, like that's a real <laughs> response and i think that one thing when we talk about this and you do show your emotions we have so many people that reach out and say that i feel the same moral injury that kate does about this i think outside of like the anniversaries i legit and i think this is the wrong way to go about things but i'm a dumb human I think it's like my way is I bury my head in the sand and I like don't think about it unless I am confronted with it. Like I don't think about it at all. I don't, which isn't healthy. Like I put up a wall in my head and unless it's right there, cause I still get so angry when I think about it and like here comes election season and what have they not mentioned much in either of the conventions and any of that stuff. It's like, they already forgot about it. It already doesn't matter. And they're moving. They're trying on. to take pictures down. It, it's just kind of um, or they're just blaming each other for it instead of anybody. I guess I'm so I'm a broken record, but it is hard, you know, reading all the stories yesterday about the 13 who were killed and reading the stories of the Afghans who didn't make it out and all these other things. It's like, holy fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, we just don't learn. And I'm. Mm, yeah. Sorry, it, right, it gets though. me every no, time. Don't apologize. Like, don't apologize. It's totally justified to feel how you're feeling. And and you're right, though, because both sides are going like this. Like, no, it was that. It was that administration's fault. No, it was that. It's America's fault. It's America's somebody, fault. Yeah. Somebody just say it was it was my fault. Somebody, I'm Spartacus. I think that yeah. would give so much closure to so many individuals if they just took the ownership. We can't change what happened. 
It was extremely unfortunate. We recognize that it did not go well, and that's putting it lightly. Someone, for the love of God, please just take some ownership. That ain't yeah. going to happen at this point. No chance. No chance. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, it was a bit of a disaster. Taliban went across the country. And I think just reading that line, remembering seeing story after story of they took this city, they took that city, they took this city. Oh, I was in that city. And I remember how hard 3-1 and 2-9 fought to take it over. And Taliban has it fully now. And like all this stuff, it's like very visceral, like deep feeling reaction that I have to it. And then. And as and yeah. because we they are taking down the pictures and it's hard. Like people just don't want to talk about it. We're going to remind the listener, yeah, what actually happened three years ago. So, by the time August twenty sixth hit, and this was, people don't realize so many Afghans worked for the U.S. Like, like hundred. Would I be crazy to say hundreds of thousands? Like, for different contractors, some were under food contractors, some were security, some were mm -hmm. police and military, and but I mean any kind of job you could think of on the big bases, like the Afghans were there helping with it. They worked at the bazaars. They worked like cleaning. They did facilities, <laughs> maintenance. They did and all kinds of stuff. Like any of the infrastructure that you would see that that's not military personnel. Doing right. That. So it was U S contractors and like NATO contractors who the Afghans worked for. And in part of working for us, a lot of them got a promise that, hey, by the end of this, you'll get a visa and we'll get you out of there when it is time for the withdrawal. That was like part of them will willing to risk their lives and their families' lives to help to help us out and to help their country out. That was like part of the promise. The oversight of the paperwork to make that happen for almost all these contracting companies who were raking in massive amounts of money was next to zero. There was no oversight, no accountability, no nothing for the paperwork to get these people visas from all these different contractors. So finally, we're coming to the very end of the time for us to withdraw. And there's tens of thousands of Afghans being like, um, what about me? What about me? I worked for you guys for 10 years, for 20 years. Like, you know, and it's like, well, we don't have all the right paperwork for you. You can't come through. I'm paraphrasing here. And like, that's very simplifying it. But like, that's yeah, that's straight up. That's the gist. The gist yeah. Um, all these major contractors were allowed to just completely fuck over a lot of people and make a lot of money anyways. Um, so August 26th, we're right down to the nitty gritty. It's time for us to leave. There's thousands of people, including American citizens, Afghans who worked with us forces and others seeking evacuation gathered at Abbey gate, one of the main entrances to the Kabul airport. And so that was the last place that Americans were at really everybody else had dipped out of the country. That was like the last spot we were dipping out from Intelligence reports suggest there's an imminent threat of an attack by ISIS-K, an affiliate of the Islamic State group, targeting crowds at the airport. And like, no kidding. It was like the most perfect, a tightly crowded space where nobody had anywhere to go and nobody had any want to leave because they were so desperate to get through. It was like the perfect target. By midday, evacuations continued. Despite the warnings, evacuation operations were going on at Abbey Gate and... <clears throat> Those 13 and the others that were working that gate, they weren't dumb. They had to have mm -hmm. known what a massive, massive, almost imminent risk was there. And they continued doing their job. I mean, they did they possible. In a possible yeah. situation. Yeah. And they're also, meanwhile, getting calls from a million different people in the States. They're troop buddies. They're this, they're that. Us. Congress members, us, my buddy, you know, my Afghan interpreter is out there. Please, you got us. So they're just this group of. U.S. troops is just feeling an immense amount of pressure from all sides. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is why all that digital Dunkirk and everything that we've had several people on the show talking about. This is when that was happening. Yeah. Um, so af uh, late afternoon is when 530 p.m. local time, the suicide bomber detonates an explosive device in the dense crowd outside Abbey Gate. The explosion causes immediate chaos and devastation, significant casualties. 13 U.S. suicide members, including 11 Marines, one Navy corpsman, one Army soldier, and at least 170 Afghan civilians. Are I know killed. I know you didn't mean to, but you oh. said 13 uh, suicide service members. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. 13 U.S. Su service members. Sorry. Yeah. Jesus. Um, and dozens more are injured. And I think people forget, too. I was, you know, reading stories and going around this week that 
the service members who were injured from that. I was following a Marine who was paralyzed in that mm -hmm. and her recovery after like so many more people permanently affected by this. I think she was one of the ones that was in the picture with President Trump yeah. at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. OK, I think she was in that picture. Yeah. So medical the, in the immediate response, medical personnel, both military and civilian, rushed to treat the wounded. And one you're worried about, is there going to be a secondary bombing now? Yep. Because that's the signature move. You wait until the help arrives and then you make it even worse. And two, the amount of people we're talking hundreds killed and wounded. Where do you even begin? Like, yeah. how do you even begin to triage that? Where do you even start? The scene is chaotic as survivors try to escape and military personnel work to secure the area. In the evening, they had to go back out and evacuation resumes. Despite the attack, flights continue throughout the night, though operations are complicated in the aftermath of the bombing. ISIS Clay claims responsibility, which is widely condemned internationally. President Joe Biden addresses the nation, vowing to hunt down those responsible for the attack. August 27th through the 30th, evacuation efforts continue at the airport under heightened security until the final U.S. withdrawal on August 30th, 2021. U.S. and international forces conduct an investigation into the attack. Security at the remaining gates is further tightened. The attack at Abbey Gate becomes the defining moment of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, highlighting the dangers faced during the evacuation. And I know they've had the hearings. I know, like... To me, they didn't lead to any real, once again, accountability no, or answers just, at all. It was, it was cyclical. It, you know, failures were pointed out or in circular. the planning and execution, um, inadequate contingency planning. And like, who didn't see that coming? Again, like, we knew that was good. Anybody, I promise you, the troops on the ground in the weeks leading up to it were like, this is going to be an insane shit show and people are going to die. I promise you that was said in the smoke pit there from the lowest ranks. So why couldn't the people at the top, like, uh, do you I think guess, that they're like looking back? Obviously we saw what happened in real time. And I think it was about worst case scenario. I've been trying to think like how you would do this. Like it, I, I feel like with the amount of people, the amount of equipment, the like, that logistical undertaking is crazy. Like, I don't I don't know how you do it in a smooth way, but that's the reason why people like the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, and people like that have jobs, like to make the hard decisions that some dumbass podcaster can't make. Yeah, I, I think should have been more of a coordinated effort with other allies. I think that certainly would have helped, but I'm with you. I I don't have the magic answer on, oh, this was this is how you should have done it. I, there's definitely people out there that there's, yeah, will there's act not as though be that there's an answer. I think administration right. yeah. after administration passed the buck. and Maybe I, because they didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, that's part of the reason we were there as long as we were too, you know, because people... At some point prior to when we did eventually leave, there was discussed like, all right, we got to get out of here. And very quickly, people realized, well, this is going to be extremely difficult. So they mm -hmm. said, we'll worry about that. I don't know. Let next the next week. administration deal with yeah. it. Let the next administration yeah. deal with Hit it. Let that the can next... down the road. And, and meanwhile, the contractors leadership. are operating with reckless abandon, rolling in money. Trillions of dollars unaccounted with for. zero oversight on how they're handling the contractors, the Afghans, the foreign nationals, like zero of it. And so, and guess what? <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked to find the revolving door of the contractors making all that money connected to the people at the top making the decisions. Oh, without like, a doubt. Tinfoil hat, Katie, but like. Oh, you don't need a tinfoil hat. That's just how no, it works. That's, yeah, oh. I think that's just a stone cold fact. And I yeah, guess that's yeah. what kills me. They're sitting and in I'll their mansions you, and they don't give a fuck about you are not there, mm -hmm. like, when you're not on the ground and you have no connection with whether that's your family member or your neighbor has a son or a daughter serving, it's really easy to remove yourself, especially when you tie it to uh, uh, commerce and, and making money. It's it's very easy to distance yourself and and look at it in black and white terms as numbers on a paper, and you don't think about any of these decisions and the ramifications that might 
follow based on them. So it's not surprising that we got ourselves into the mess that we did. And it's not surprising that we were unable to untangle that web and that it just got continued to, to push down the way. Yeah. So they closed up the investigation. I guess it's closed up. I wouldn't know completely, but they brought in generals that were in charge. They brought in secretary Austin, secretary Blinken. Everybody had like their, reasoning about why what happened happened uh and none of the answers were good nobody was held accountable and at this point three years later it's clear that nobody ever will be accountable and i nope. think that's i think it's one of the i think it's the signature failure of the biden administration by not having a good answer no one being relieved of duty and i'm not one to relieve somebody just because something goes poorly but this was this was egregious like the way that it went down was egregious. I don't know how if I was, let's say we do have to have another war like a, and we go places and we constantly use local nationals on our side. Like we did it in Vietnam. We did it in Korea. We did it um, Afghanistan, Iraq. We'll do it again. Uh, there's also our partners that happened. This was under the Trump administration. Do you remember at the border border of Syria and Iraq when we basically left that like completely mm. too? And there was all kinds of our Iraqi um, allies that were slaughtered, essentially. Knowing that story, knowing what happened in Afghanistan, imagine being a foreign national in a conflict where you're supporting American troops and trusting what they say. Like, I, I would not like at all trust what the American government says if you're a local national, because these people are getting slaughtered. Yeah. Like the there's already been I think I, I wrote it down. I think the number was over fifteen hundred of people who have been targeted explicitly by the Taliban and killed because of their assistance for Americans. And we didn't do shit about it. That is crazy. Yeah. It's uh, it's not great, Bob. <laughs> and now things are turning the worst, which we said multiple times was going to happen. The Taliban this week published vice laws is what they're calling it, one of which bans women's voices and their bare faces in public completely. Yeah, they kind of started out slower with uh, clamping down on women a little bit. But I think bit education by bit. and sports started because there was Afghan women that were able to go to like soccer games and shit like that for a while. All of that stuff ended immediately uh, along with girl education. Yeah. And then this new burqa that they're being forced to wear, the, the most extreme version used to be, at least that I would see in Marja, which is like a very conservative, still super Taliban stronghold, was this blue or black. And it, then it would have netting. So you can make out the face like a little bit, but it was netting. They still had like a whole face to breathe because it's 150 degrees there in the summertime. This new mandate completely black from head to toe you can't see like a ninja fully covered can't see the eyes can't see anything the most oppressive shit i've ever seen and uh it comes from a sect of islam called wahhabism <clears throat> um i don't know if you guys are familiar with wah wahhabism but it's the type of islam or the branch of islam that osama bin laden ascribed to mm -hmm. and anytime you see that I think that's pretty obvious like that that level it is the most extreme type of islam that there is yeah these people are in for a world of her it's just going to get worse and worse again and which then... perversion of the islam i should yeah, say yeah too. yeah yeah but yeah so not good the laws were spoken by their supreme leader on wednesday the taliban set up a ministry for the propagation of virtue and prevention of vice um Public transportation, music, shaving, celebrations, they are any little part of your life, they're in it and they're managing it with a 114 page, 35 article document that uh, was sent to the AP. So they want that out there. Um, mandatory for women to veil her body in public at all times to avoid tempting others. Though clothing cannot be thin, tight, or short. And again, 150 degrees. Veil them. So yeah, blah, blah, blah. Same old. Can't sing. Can't recite aloud in public. Can't you can't do take anything. pictures of living beings threaten an already <laughs> fragile Afghan media landscape. Um, you can't play music. There's no solo female travel. The mixing of men and women in a pu in public aren't allowed on and on and on the most extreme type of um, subjugation that you could possibly have is what's happening in Afghanistan once again, which is I mean, Back to square one after 7,268 days. 
Yeah. The unfortunate thing, and this is this is me being a pessimist, which is rare, in terms of how they treat women, you're going up thousands, going up against thousands of years of just their culture. I don't know how you change that. But it's, it's not like in the 1970s, it wasn't that way, cons. Like they turned the corner big time in the 70s in and Afghanistan, 80s. Though? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there I thought there was in, other like, parts of and Kabul. No, yeah. it was like in the 70s oh, okay. and 80s. It wasn't was like parts. that. It wasn't. Oh, okay. It didn't turn back to that until the Taliban takeover. And even then, throughout right, Afghan well, history, even throughout Afghan history, it wasn't this extreme. Like it wasn't this level of craziness where they're basically prisoners now. So, yeah, it's, it just sucks. Sucks yep. all the way around. All right, let's move on to round number two. We're going to talk a little bit about this guy. Uh, he's a September 6th guy. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but his name is Nathan Thornsberry. And this dummy published a book um, that's uh, like 160 something pages. I'm going to order it. Uh, he published this book that, or maybe I'll find it if I could rip it because I don't want to give him money. Um, I'll just. <laughs> I'll find it illegally online. That's fine with me. So I'll find that thing. But he talked about what he was going through, what he thought was the the very typical January 6th participant that gives their reason that the media is evil it's, and that America is under socialist attack, all those different types of things. But he not only goes into the fact that he was there January 6th, but in this book, he gives specifics including pictures of him being at there up against the front gate where the bike rails were pushing it up against police officers saying all kinds of crazy shit. He did an interview um, right after January 6th. They could not find this guy. Like the, the federal authorities could not find this guy. They wanted to, cause they had him on video assaulting a police officer and they couldn't find him anywhere. And then next thing you know, he publishes this book. And then like seven or eight days after he published this book, the FBI comes a knocking and they're like, dude, we got pictures of you. We've been looking for you and they found him. And now he's facing four felony counts and three misdemeanor accounts for what he did on that day. All time dummy Marine moment. Yeah. Like, don't tell on yourself. What are you, you doing? Gunny, you can't gunny champagne yourself. We're going to call that gunny champagne in from now on. I mean, there was 900 people so far that have been 900 and something people so far that have been arrested in connection to January 6th. About 250 of those are veterans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Are the but only 10 percent of that 90 or 10 percent of that 200 active duty. Okay, if we yeah, okay. crushing it. That's good. Um, <laughs> what are the chances that dude just thought like, oh, all right, it's been long enough. Like that, it won't matter. They they won't I wonder come what, at me. What I wonder what the statute of limitation is on that. You're right, cons. Yeah. I don't For, know what the statute of limitations is, but it's probably longer than well, it's clearly longer than what he gave it credit for. Yeah, it ain't but it also ain't five years or whatever, I, four there, years. There are very uh very few crimes that you want to come out and admit. You know, 40, you know, you know, even waiting like 40 years after the fact, there's very few crimes you want to ever actually admit to if you if you don't get arrested on the spot. That's why I'm Just so brave. For, that's why I'm so brave for admitting that I stole the Free Willy soundtrack from the PX when I was like yeah. 11. Yeah, See? they're still looking for the person who did that. By <laughs> they the are. Way. Yeah, I owe I owe them a solid thing. I think twelve ninety nine probably were CD. Wait, time out. Was that a CD? Oh yeah, it was CD. But back in the day, if I'm and this is this is going back, but didn't CDs? If I ever, they had like an extended plastic case that would sound an alarm if you tried to walk no, out. With it. Not no, not all. Some I got caught with one of those stickers that was at Circuit City too, mm -hmm. about the same time. Yeah, the sticker would yeah. get people. People would not Jack, notice she, that. Jeff, you said some sticky fingers, huh? I fucking love stealing. If it, if I if I wasn't uh, if I was below eighteen again. I would be stealing. It's just so fun. Like, I, I don't want to steal from somebody, but a corporation. I feel like if I get out of Walmart with something, I should be able to keep it. Same thing. If you're not a, if you're not a, not, if you're a nonviolent offender and you break out of prison, I feel like you should stay out. Like, I, I feel like, like, let's say you're in prison for, I don't like where this is going. Let's say you're in prison the for distribution of marijuana. Like we're talking about like four or five ounces that you got caught. You get three years for that. 
you break out of jail, I think they should commute your sentence. I was wondering. You guys, so you, you don't think. think so? Breaking out of jail would be incredible. Would you guys? No, agree? that's part of my adult theme park. Breaking, oh, breaking out of jail. Of yeah, that's definitely part of my adult theme park. Dude, it's, it's if you build, chases, it's a breaking out of jail. It's um, all sorts of things that you wouldn't want to actually have to do in real life, but you kind of want to see. Would I be able to, you know, out evade the cops? Yeah. If you built a prison, like people would pay money to go and try and break out. I Thousand think... percent. People look at yeah. people do the escape rooms. It's like yeah. an escape room on steroids. I think that'd be a yeah. great attraction. Once we get rid Trademark, of the prison Marcus. industrial complex and we have maybe we don't have the most incarcerated people in the world. Some of those jails are going to be open or an old jail, like whenever they rebuild one. There was one, a county jail outside of Texas that was a super old jail. They built a new state of the art jail. I think cons, we go in, we buy an old jail. We're cooking with gas. Think of all the space to roller skate. Because you could do well, paintball. You could do paintball in there. You could do all kinds you of stuff. You would do a whole bunch of stuff. And so much give it stuff. a few years. I think we'll see on uh, Zillow Gone Wild that account. There'll be an old jail turned into like apartment buildings or a I'm gonna home look or it something. up. I'm going to look Definitely. it up how much an old jail will cost. Oh, there's, I see every now and then Zillow Gone Wild has done that. There's been small town, like community jails that almost look oh, like big okay. ass I've houses. Oh, I've only ever seen like churches. Yeah. They redo them. Yeah, no, there's every now and then. I've wanted to since I sh saw that show Prison Break. Did you ever watch yeah. that? No. Prison Break mm -hmm. was amazing because. Tish Cyrus is banging the lead guy now, right? No, the lead no. guy's gay. Yeah. People love running away from jails. There's a whole um there's a whole race series, Escape from Alcatraz. There's like a triathlon that they do every year. Oh, where, yeah. You know that yeah. part of that is uh swimming in the San Francisco Bay from, from the island. Couldn't pay me to swim in that fucking bay. So the guy sister... Really? Oh. Yeah, my older sister. Yeah. I think it was a triathlon or a biathlon. Yeah, Isn't there a shit ton of water. sharks in there? Yes, sir. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's dangerous as shit. Yeah. Wow. Be where swimming in yeah. Sharks. That's exactly right. So prison break this guy, it was where I really fell in love with people breaking out of jail because this guy had he was an engineer and his brother was in jail for a crime he did not commit. OK. And so he got the schematics of the jail and he got all the different he figured out a way that he could break out and he needed like certain tools and he made sure that he tattooed on his body like the size of a screw that he needed um to get in order to get somewhere and he found it that was underneath the bleachers and he mapped out all these different things through his tattoo his tattoo was his map to get out of jail That's a cool idea it was fucking awesome and then it got a little wild for a while one dude um did some forced blow jobs which was weird like he just he wanted to do a blow job and the other guy didn't want a blow job um, but he gave him one anyway I'm thinking about getting back into those blowjobs. Nah. Ah. Uh, blowjobs doesn't seem fun. I got a hump in my back now. It's not. It's not the same. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Cons, we'll start with you. You know, it's funny you mentioned that little tattoo of the screw because that's part of my my save round. Oh. I don't know why this bothers me. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, but it does. But the trend these days with these people. Oh, boy. Here, here we, we go. go. Old man yelling yeah. at the cloud. Put a cloud up. <laughs> the Let it out. who have the, like, endlessly random little, like, outline tattoos all over their forearms and Shout arms. That make, yeah. So I was that make Shout out no Nick sense. <laughs> Brianna Chicken Fry. Love yeah. Well, well, so that's the thing. I think it's, like. It's more trendy than it is people actually wanting to get tattoos. Like I chapter, think... at one point or another, you had a reason for every dumb tattoo you have mm -hmm. and you own them. I, I think that's better than what these kids have because no, it's all I... out in the open. This, I like I think... Nick Tarani as a kid. He's like 34. <laughs> I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I do think this generation is like, I liked it. I wanted it. I got it. Who gives a shit? Like, I like that that tattoos aren't as big a deal. Oh, it's permanent. You're going to have that. So what? But. I feel like to pull off tattoos like Nick and Brianna Chicken Fry, you have to be super cool. And like, they are. Yeah, they're they cool as shit. Off. If I did well, that, let me I'd just like, say, oh, no. I think a lot of people do. No, you're them. cool. Not cool. Not that Katie cool. cool. I'm not get a cube of tungsten tattooed on my thigh. Cool. I disagree. All right, I'll you do could it. do that. I think you should do that. Okay. 
All right. Anything else? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's my gripe with with tattoos these days. Um, Cons. If I you got a question. Had gun to your head, you had to get a tattoo. What are you getting? I take the bullet to the head. What? <laughs> this is like whenever one of those quiz TikToks goes to um, BYU and they're like, "Would you rather go to war or drink a cup of coffee?" Like, and they're oh, like, "Oh." Uh, war i thought he was gonna say i'll get maggie <laughs> on my arm not bullet to the head I'll i thought he was it. gonna say a west point football logo like yeah. the mule the mule or something that'd be a cool one the old i should mule. get it i'll get it for you Con. cons get oh, a giant back of the mule. <laughs> i'll get the west point mule <laughs> tattooed oh i love that i love that speaking <laughs> of maggie i need some help okay so the other day at the park some little girl just like mushed her in the face and pushed her over yeah. now later she came back and she was nice and offered her ice cream and stuff but when your kid gets pushed by another kid and seemingly their their parent didn't see it or isn't around, what's the protocol there? And you basically and, turn you turn into the mountain and you are um, you're the tribute essentially. You're the champion and you got to punt that other little kid out the playground. I try what? to remind myself mm -hmm. that, that kid that kids are. It's hard to remember sometimes that kids are kids and. Your kid will probably be the pusher or the musher at some oh, point too. Yeah. Now we're going back to she's overcompensating from when Cash was a biter. It is, well, also too, our very <laughs> first day in Chicago, he's I took him over biter. to the splash pad, and he just walked up to this other little kid and shoved this kid to the ground. Was it and, Maggie? No, it wasn't. But like, <laughs> thank God, what if I hadn't seen it. You're right. It's tough when the other parent doesn't see it happening. She didn't. Yeah. Right. And um, so I just try to be like remove my son from the situation and i say out loud to no one i'm like hands are not for hitting and we don't mm -hmm. do that kind we of we don't stuff. touch our friends we're gonna have to move away for now if they're gonna keep doing that like i just try to be the bigger person yeah. if it continues i do think it's okay to tell the other parent hey your kid like not in a mean way but like hey your kid keeps coming over and hitting my kid do you mind like getting a handle on that and then if they say no especially if you're in a chuck e cheese parking lot then you just you start punching or yeah. if they they do it again you mace them or you mace, mace the parent sure. you mace a the little parent, bit sure. like you hope the kid gets secondary. Yeah. 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 Like contact. Okay. Not direct all, spray. I, yeah. I'll tell Alex she was with her. I wasn't with her. I heard about it secondhand. So I'll let Alex know. That oh, she, yeah. I'm nice. I'm surprised that Alex didn't put the people's elbow on that. Kid. It is hard, though. I, she Pat, wanted... <laughs> I bet Pat yelled at some little kid who was messing with cash. And I had to be like, dude, it's another little kid. You got to like chill. It's hard. But like, you can't do that. Because I thought the mom was about to come over and claw her faces off. I was like, yeah. Anyway, it's tough yeah. out there. The least confrontational Marine of all time is yeah. Sergeant Katie. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted um, to Sergeant Katie. Yeah. You know me. I need that on a t-shirt. Sergeant Katie. Sergeant Katie. Dude, Sergeant I feel Katie. like I'm, speaking of, I feel like I'm getting into smoking again. Are you? Uh -oh. No. I uh, I'm going to tell Cart. Okay, I'm out. Damn. That's yeah. enough. I haven't. Enough not I haven't. He is Kate's accountability partner. They tell, ask if I'm cigaretting anymore, and it makes me feel <laughs> sad inside. You no, know? I just been smelling. And I'm like, wouldn't it be nice? If you thought I that I had a cigarette at camp. Yeah, I was so excited. All at camp cons. I went out one night and was up to like three something in the morning. What? Wait, where did you go means, out? Yeah, the, she went. She went to I the went woods. To the fire pit. In the oh, woods. No. <laughs> it's three in the morning. I went out. Eddie said, That's where Kate's Whoa, at three three She's like, I went out. Morning. I was up till three forty-five. Oh my god. Yes, I had Donnie does his boombox suitcase and a micro was there a microphone or i think i was pretending to hold a pine i was holding a pine cone i guess i was so drunk i don't remember eddie was like i heard you screaming chumbawamba at like 2 45 in the yeah, morning he told me that and yeah. came out to make sure he I said can you talk to kate um it's our last night and i would prefer she doesn't scream chumbawamba at 2 and the worst part i was like right downhill from all the cabins so and i was like the only one up and White Sox Dave, <laughs> and everyone's saying I banged White Sox Dave. I did not. Wow, we that rumor got started because we were the last two. Well, listen, we were the last two at the fire pit, scream singing, except for the poor counselor who had to stay up with us so he could put the fire out. And he was like, "Are you guys done singing yet?" We're like, "No, you guys here comes uh, tired yet." <laughs> and then, uh, oh, he, that person needs to be more forceful. It's like, hey, <laughs> yeah, have a, lights hey, out at one. I have a blurry out. picture of him with a fire extinguisher putting the fire out at the end of the night when I was like, "You're a pussy." <laughs> I, I just picture you, him trying to put the fire out and you chasing him with a, a stick that's on fire. Like, leave our fire alone. I don't even know how you got that much beer. The crazy thing, the secu security guard, Mike, went and uh -oh. got me two tall boys. And then somebody was passing around a bottle of liquor. And then there uh -oh. was 
the Wisconsin beer everybody drinks, and then there was mm. whatever. Here's the cigarette thing. None of these young kids cigarette anymore. No, they just vape. It's vape. Yeah. It was such or a are they Or they use lame. Lucy. I must have asked 30 people if they had a cigarette. Not a, one of them. Maybe packing them Lucy's in. Damn. I want to know, is there any current troops out there listening to this? What's the deal? Are you guys more vape? What's the vape to cigarette ratio now? No, it's Lucy season. Oh, Lucy's is yeah. the main thing. Yeah, Lucy's, yeah. Do you guys, Lucy, has this changed smoke pit culture? It's got to. Probably. It's got to be Lucy pit. Be. Like, what is smoke pit culture Dude, now That's compared if, to what it was? Lucy should sponsor smoke pits. Like, somebody... Yeah. There needs to be advertising on smoke pits. Like today, today's smoke session is brought to you by our good friends at Cools. If you're looking for a menthol cigarette, Cools is the way to go. Remember my show idea, Pimp My Smoke Pit. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's make a smoke pit. Cools, motherfucker. Yeah. If you're a company Kegerator. commander or battalion commander and you're listening, let us know. We want to renovate a smoke pit. Nice grill, some fans. We should do a podcast in a smoke pit. Seating. Yeah, we should. Or just so, smoke so I can in bump here. a cigarette off somebody. Moral of that story is. You think Big Cat would care if we smoked in here? We smoked a cigarette. Uh, che, French Che smoked a cigarette on the act the other day. This place would stink because it's got yeah. like carpeted walls and stuff. It's tough. <laughs> All right, Kate. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I have anything. I feel like I've turned a corner physically. That's I got good. my Snicks shot out of 12. I get a shot behind each arm at the VA once a month. It's supposed to help regrow my bones. And... They're always going to be fucked, but I finally feel I, my back was like on fire 24 seven and I just was like living with it and it's less on fire now. That's good. Yeah. Happy so to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I and picking up and putting my son in his crib isn't like agony anymore. Like I feel like for the first time and I can definitively say over the last few weeks, like I've turned a corner and something has changed. I was playing four square at camp. Yeah, you I were was lightly jogging a little bit. I was getting nervous. And I was nervous for you when you're jogging. I know. I still they, I had another scan. recently. I'm like, now the that, bones are still Swiss cheese, but physically, I feel now uh, that you're bouncing back a little bit and knowing how much like not being active hurt you at camp. Like when you're doing foreplay, I'm like video square. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out White Sox, Dave. So when you're doing four square. And <laughs> <laughs> and I am <laughs> fucking horny Kate. Yeah, right? 23 year old Kate Let's goes to camp. <laughs> I was not doing four play on camp on camp. 23 year old Kate showed up at Camp Orphan <laughs> after a six no. hour charter bus. So she's playing Foursquare and I'm videoing like the proud dad. I'm like, look yeah. at her go. She's got good bones. I know. I felt proud of myself. Sorry. It feels good. I got to I'm so jealous. I, I wish I was at camp. Because number one, like just that whole idea of like sleeping in a cabin with a bunch of people, all the games you played. I love all those sorts of games. Wearing a hoodie, making a big fire. I was really. You're competitive. I, I really too. You would have yeah. thrived. Yeah. I would have been excellent. I, maybe hopefully I can talk to somebody. I can get myself invited next year. I would oh, have loved it. I, I don't have a physical competitive bone left in my body. I oh, just, I just could not care. I, I used to be. I got plenty. And I don't try. I'm just like, I don't care about it. You did I, good at the egg toss. I I mean, I just don't like egg because I didn't have to move. Like, I don't I don't want to run around. Like, the whole time we were on that volleyball thing, I'm like, my ankle's about to shatter. Like, my body is so fragile at this point. Mm -hmm. I just don't well, want to put also a, realize whole, a lot of effort. Hurting yourself to the point that you are inconvenienced on like your really? daily. Yeah. Like popping an Achilles at this age, knock on wood, dude. No I, thanks. I will miss every shot in basketball and get like be like this dude doesn't have an athletic bone in his body. Great, D is my Achilles intact? Sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. what's what's scary is it kind of it happens overnight in the sense of your body at one point can really still keep up, and then all of a sudden it's like a light switch. Unless you're somebody who just is a freak, like I I know some people who you know, stay in shape really, really, uh, religiously. But if you're just a regular person, it's just all of a sudden one day you try to go do something like Riggs and you pop an Achilles, and you realize, wait, I can't do that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard an interesting, I'm the kind of dumb person that needs like a good quote in my head to like help motivate me through life. 
So like now I hate like cleaning the house and doing Donna. And instead of saying like, I have to do this now, because I saw it on TikTok, I say, I get to do this because I have a laundry machine. How lucky am I? I have to like mentally change the way I think about that. I get to put the kids to bed tonight, even though it's going to take three hours and some screaming. How lucky am I that I got these two great guys like trying to change the way I think about things. And I've never been super into my health. You guys know this real well. But somebody was saying, think of your health now as like investing into a 401k plan for retirement. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. The more you invest in yourself now, the better your life when you're free and retired and get to do anything financially and physically, the better it will be. So it's like, it's annoying now, but it's going to pay off later. So it helps me to think that way. That's corny and dorky. No, I think no, reframing your thought. I yeah, think that's great. Yeah. I always have to reframe things. I can't just live life normally and healthily. Yeah. Gotta I think that's one part of the moral injury too. I don't think it yeah. puts off like you didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but you did your job whenever you thought that you had it. And that was the best that you could do. Like yeah. you did what you thought you could do and it turned out the way it turned out, but there's nothing you could do about that result. Can't just marinate on everything. Oh, I'm marinating. I'm going to marinate. You're a huge marinator. I'm going to marinate. I'm going to be so salty by the time, by the time I'm cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. I got two things. I think one, I was, I showed our Booger, Booger Platoon uh, group chat. So Booger Platoon group chat is my favorite name for any group chat I'm in, but it's with our old producer, Kyle and us three. And I sent a picture I got uh, so I'm getting my medicine from the VA now and oh, the, yeah. the VA mails me my medicine, which is unbelievably convenient. If it's not something that you need right away, like uh, when I go to the dentist, they give me prescription toothpaste and that'll show up. I don't have to wait 45 minutes, an hour to get it. it just shows up in a couple of days and it's great. Now I got my medication uh, this time and it came and on the bottle. It said. <laughs> for bipolar depression like and what are we doing what if that's a picture it was like in big letters it's like, huge bipolar, yeah. it's like in bold there's no lower cases anywhere it's like this motherfucker's bipolar what if you live in a place with multiple people that share a bathroom you don't want that on there now granted it does say like what the medicine is like lamictal it does say that it's lamictal yeah. on there which if you google it you could figure out what it's for i wouldn't know that unless i google it though yeah Those labels, but it's a mood it's a mood stabilizer and even yeah. on the medication label like on if you look it up it has different diagnoses that it could possibly be for because mm -hmm. there's overlap you know like what what if i had chlamydia yeah <laughs> and they put it on the bottle and my roommate yeah, in the barrack was like yeah, yeah, for crabs. <laughs> Kate's got crabs what's again. The, what's the technical term for crabs? Is there one? Oh, there absolutely you, has to be. I don't Google know what it that, is. Google that, Cons. You got your computer. Google what yeah. that is. Um, second, I am a hu I've turned into a huge bike head. I know. Huge bike that. head. I got a new bike yesterday. So I've had a mountain bike. That was nice. It was a Trek mountain bike. And Cardi always wants to go around town. And I just thought the mountain bike, the way that you have to hunch over, not very comfortable at all. So I got a little fixie bike yesterday, sold my bike. This was actually cool. I sold that bike, uh, the Trek bike for three hundred and twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. And nice. then yesterday I bought the new bike for three hundred and twenty four dollars and ninety seven cents. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. So I come home with a brand new bike and Annalise was like, oh, God, how much did you spend on this bike? And I was like, technically, I made, I, I made three cents oh, off, three of, this, off of this bike. There's no better feeling than when the, the when the wife asks you something like that and you have mm -hmm. a really good answer for mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. you know she's expecting you to say something that's going to bury yourself. And when you can come back and like, actually, it didn't cost anything. And, and Trek sent it. me that bike before. So I didn't even pay for it. Oh, so you actually made money. Technically. I technically made money. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, wow. I just didn't spend any. I didn't make it because they gave it to me. So yeah, they true. I made 325 and then I gave it up. That's yeah. fine. That's like gambling. Anyway, like um, if I walk away and I lose all my money gambling. Hmm, that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, that's gambling. I plan on if I gamble, they'll lose everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah well, thing. that's the idea. Yeah. You only pick out what you think you can afford to lose. Yeah. Um, yep. Shout out to our friends. It's also teams. known as uh, public lice. Or excuse me, public. <laughs> Cubic <laughs> lice. Um, and the no, medical term nice. for that is pediculosus pubis. 
Sounds like a Harry oh. Potter. Uh, <laughs> but you can also you know, hope you miss. It does. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, but this weekend, I'm doing a little same kind of area that I did that 100 mile race. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a cruise around with some friends, got a little lake house and going to do that for Labor Day. Awesome. Oh, Is this nice. weekend Labor Day? Yeah. Yes. Holy oh, shit. I guess we should thank the troops for Labor Day. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Guys for thank Labor God Day. for your yeah. service, guys. Appreciate Give them it. your speech. You're 48. Yeah. All right. So that's how we end the show today. Safe sex is great sex. You better wear a latex because you don't want that latex that I think I'm latex. So wrap it up and sound the retreat. <laughs>